So I've spent a week with the Samsung Galaxy Book Ultra. I've run benchmarks. I haven't been able to get all of my benchmarks run, so we're gonna have another review coming out after this, but I wanted to get as much data out to you as possible on the power inside of this Samsung Galaxy Book Ultra. This is the i9-13900H version with the RTX 4070 and 32 gigs of RAM, and this thing packs a punch inside of this thin and light chassis. Now, during my unboxing, I showed off a couple of benchmarks and I showed you my general thoughts of the build quality, usability, and the upgrade path on the laptop. And speaking of the upgrade path, that's one area that I was excited about. It comes with two M.2 slots in the laptop, one occupied and one unoccupied. All you have to do is pop off the bottom cover and you can add additional storage to the Ultra, which gives you so much more customization compared to the MacBook Pro lineup. Now, the big advantage that you're going to have, of course, with the MacBook Pro lineup is going to be the battery life. That's one area that was good on this laptop considering the CPU and the GPU that are in it, but it wasn't exactly stellar. Now, I was able to run my two initial productivity battery life benchmark and streaming video playback benchmarks for this laptop. I've still yet to be able to do the Photoshop and video editing one, but here's some battery life results so far. Now, one area that people were concerned about with such a thin and light chassis and such high performance components was the thermals. And this is an area I was actually pretty concerned about as well. However, I was proven wrong. I ran the 4K video editing export thermal results. And as you can see, the max temperature we saw out of this laptop during the 4K export was 76 degrees Celsius. And the best temperature we saw was 58 degrees Celsius and all at excellent export times. Now, not only did we have excellent export times, have great thermal temperatures, but we kept it under 48 decibels of fan noise. So this laptop is efficient, runs cool, and has great performance for video editing. Now I'm gonna get into all the benchmarks later in the video. For now, let's jump into a few more details that we were unable to cover during the unboxing. Now, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of the Samsung Galaxy Book, Ultra, Samsung is actually running their big Discover Samsung sale right now, March 20th through the 26th. So if you're catching this video at the week of its release, you can head on over to samsung.com by using the links in the description below. Check the live pricing. They have great sales going on for the Galaxy Book Ultra and devices like the Galaxy S23 Ultra, the S22, TVs, dishwashers, just, uh, just all kinds of stuff. So Definitely check it out. If you use that link and you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. Now, the panel on this laptop is absolutely incredible. It's a 16 inch, 16 by 10 aspect ratio display. It reaches 426 nits of screen brightness at 100% sRGB, 99% Adobe RGB, and 98% DCI-P3, all at a Delta E of 0 0.73. And it is a 2880 by 1800 resolution display. So it's crisp, color accurate, sharp, dark darks, bright brights, is a beautiful display to look at. Now, for those of you that did miss the unboxing, here's a quick sample of the webcam so you can see what that looks like. This is the webcam on the Samsung Galaxy Book 3 Ultra and a little sample of the audio for you as well. And if you're curious about the sound coming out of the speakers, here's a quick audio sample for you. Now the keyboard, as I mentioned during the unboxing, I really do like. It's got a short to medium key press. The keys are snappy, responsive, and they feel great under your fingers. Now the trackpad is what I like even more. What I love about the trackpad is it's a glass trackpad. It hinges on like a little diving board mechanism. So if you touch at the top, it technically won't click because it's not a vibration click trackpad. It's a manual click trackpad. So you come down about halfway down the trackpad, you'll actually be able to activate the click and the click is so smooth. It's so satisfying. They did a really good job of this trackpad and it doesn't rattle. So it's mounted very well to the chassis. Now, of course, something I've complained about a lot, I'll just say it once. I hate how it's pushed to the left to center on the keyboard. I wish it was center on the chassis, not the keyboard, because as a right-handed user, I'm kind of like shifting my body over, but I'm not going to over complain about that. Now this is a 16 inch display, which gives you tons of screen real estate. But if you're wanting to take things to the next level with your workflow, then consider the Monduo 16 inch 
tri-screen setup, which gives you a triple monitor setup and it mounts really nicely to the Galaxy Book 3 Ultra. It connects in seconds using USB type C and you're good to go getting triple the screen real estate. If you're curious about the Mon Duo, definitely head down in the description below and click those links. Check out the live pricing and availability. Love this setup. It's 100% DCI-P3 color accurate, 500 nits of screen brightness, and they are 16 inch panels. Now, as I mentioned in the unboxing, I expected to get the i7 version, but I instead received the i9 version. So I've gone ahead and ordered the i7. Hopefully it'll be here in the next week or so, and I'll start benchmarking that one. But for now, the benchmarks we're gonna be looking at in this video are coming from the i9 version of the Galaxy Book 3 Ultra. Both models come with two USB type C's on the left side panel and an HDMI port, as well as a USB type A headphone jack and micro SD card reader. Now keep in mind that you have a USB type C charger. So while you're charging the laptop, one of those USB type C ports is going to be occupied. Now getting into the simulated benchmarks, you can see that inside of Geekbench, we're scoring a solid single core and multi-core score for the i9 13900H. It's a little throttled in my opinion compared to other things we're going to be seeing coming out on the market. Because when I was first running these benchmarks, I thought, okay, this looks pretty great for an i7 processor because I didn't check the number skew. And then when I realized it was an i9, I thought, okay, for the simulated benchmarks, I expected better. You can see in Cinebench R23, single core and multi-core, they get good scores, but nothing mind-blowing. It's pretty much on par with most top tier CPUs and GPUs from last year's model. However, things take a bit of a turn when we get into the Blender Classroom benchmark. You can see that it scores an 853 in Blender. And for such a thin and light laptop, I thought this is a fantastic option for creators that are on the go, and especially for students that find themselves around campus or around town doing their work. Now, moving into Autodesk 3ds Max, Autodesk Maya and PTC Creo, you can see that it scores really good scores in those programs. Now, keep in mind, this is the RTX 4070. And so I anticipate there's gonna be other laptops coming out on the market. For instance, my beloved and unfortunately renamed Lenovo Legion Pro 5i or the 7i, and these laptops are going to probably prove to have more top-end performance because they have thicker chassis, better cooling systems. I don't mean better, like better quality, just more robust. So more robust cooling systems, which allow the processor and GPU to push the laptop even farther. What you're getting here is a thin and light laptop with great performance. You're not getting a thicker laptop with insane performance. So you gotta kinda think of this as an apples to apples comparison. I'm gonna do comparisons between the Legion and this laptop, but we're gonna talk about the pros and cons of each one. Now, the next thing to take a look at is the Photoshop benchmark with the 1,146 with the 32 gigs of RAM, a dedicated GPU, and that i9 processor, you couldn't have found a better laptop for Photoshop. Now, I recently interviewed a consumer on my channel and he had purchased the Galaxy Book 3 Pro 360 with 16 gigs of RAM because it doesn't come in 32. Wah, wah, I know we're all very sad about that. I'm frustrated. And he really liked the touchscreen capability of the Book 3 Pro 360, but he was disappointed by the fact that it didn't come in 32 gigs. This would be a great option because the performance he was seeing was lagging with his specific process. If you wanna see the video interview with him, I'll link it up at the end of this video. But the problem with going with the Ultra over the Galaxy Book 3 Pro 360 is the Ultra does not come with a touch screen. So what most artists and photographers love about the Book 3 Pro 360 it lags a little bit in performance in ways. What the Ultra does better in performance, it lags in the touchscreen. So we're kind of in this really weird situation that Samsung has put us in. So my solution to you would be get a Wacom tablet on the go, which makes you less portable, but it does give you the performance you need if you're a huge multitasker and you have very heavy Photoshop files. A huge multitasker, I mean you have five to six apps open at a time, and those apps have very large file sizes. Now moving on to After Effects, scoring a 931, a good score, not exactly a great score, I expected this one to perform a little bit better, but that still is a very good score and keeping the temperatures low in that mid 70s range for the benchmark. Now, where I was most impressed with this laptop was definitely in Premiere Pro. The fastest export time I've ever seen on my channel for a 1080p nine minute clip exported to 1080p full quality settings at 39 seconds. 
The best laptop I've seen so far is like in the 49 second range. So this beat it by a whole 10 seconds. And it's a thin and light on the go laptop. Now the next export time was the 4K, almost beating out the best export time. That GT77 Titan is a beast and it did it in just over two minutes. This laptop at two minutes and 32 seconds, except if you look at the difference between the size of the GT77 versus this laptop, it's like a complete joke. I mean, this is a 16 inch laptop. This is a 17 inch laptop and it is absolutely massive. So you saw it from a top view. Here's it from a you know thickness point of view. It's just crazy. This is a massive laptop. So it makes sense it gets really good performance. But to see that this one's only about 30 seconds behind is incredible. Now the next thing I wanna point out is for the longest time, MacBook Pros have been the go-to example for efficiency and performance while running battery power only. But recently Samsung has shown us that Apple is not the only one that can be efficient too. Using these Intel chips, we were able to get a three minute and 44 second export time for 4K on battery power. Whereas the MacBook Pro has a five minute and 26 second export time, whether you're on battery power or plugged into the wall. So that means that the Samsung Galaxy Book 3 Ultra is a better and more efficient performer from a performance standpoint. Now, the MacBook Pro does get better battery life, but from a performance standpoint, the Samsung Galaxy Book 3 Ultra takes the crown. Looking at 6K video editing, for 6K B-Raw, we did have a few more drop frames than the MacBook Pro's nine drop frames. However, the export time was substantially faster at 21 minutes and 38 seconds. The Apple MacBook Pro took around 35 minutes to do a 6K to 6K export. So the Samsung Book 3 Ultra took the crown again. Now, should you buy the Samsung Galaxy Book 3 Ultra? There's gonna be more benchmarks coming out in the next week or so, so definitely keep an eye on the channel. But for right now, if I can make a recommendation, I'm seeing a fantastic laptop for video editors, for photographers, designers, and digital artists, and especially some 3D modeling. This is a thin and light laptop that I am confident to say that you can definitely do some 3D modeling on. There is no laptop that I have seen up to this point. The closest one I would say would probably be the Asus Republic of Gamer Flow X16, but it's, again, that's a little bit thicker than this specific laptop. So if it were me, this would be a fantastic on-the-go creator laptop. The cool temperatures and quiet fan noise are another thing that really stands out to me. This is something that I haven't seen a lot up until this point where you have a thin and light laptop get great performance and not have squealing fans and a burning hot chassis. That's one thing that Asus, though they do have high performing laptops and pretty thin chassis, they have hot laptops. The laptops are usually the high 80s to low 90s in the thermal. So this laptop is a much cooler laptop. The battery life was good, not necessarily fantastic, but very good, especially for the components that are set into this laptop. Top it all off with that 3K, 100% sRGB OLED display, and you have a really awesome find. Don't forget about the sale right now going on at samsung.com, but if you're watching this video after the sale, Samsung is still has great prices on the book series, so definitely check it out. That live pricing will be there, and if you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. I'll see you guys in the next Book 3 Ultra video.